general I will give the introduction of, um, of about myself and my name is uh, Dr Muhammad Amri my basically my my background is uh, electrical engineering uh, more to measurement and instrumentation so my my research uh, falls uh, upon uh, a lot of uh, the application of sensors okay application of sensors uh, that is basically my my background <coughs> and so how how do i end up with stingless b basically i i back in 2000 basically back in 2012 i've seen uh, this new uh, trend in malaysia basically in malaysia trend of keeping uh, stingless b stingless b so stingless b uh, basically uh, not like uh, the regular honey bee that we are familiar with uh, we i will explain that and but the uh, interest grew seriously uh, uh, at uh, around uh, 2016 where i bought my I mean i acquired my first uh, log hive okay and then from that on okay i to basically teach myself and also uh, learn from other people lah by attending uh, uh, workshop and uh, uh, i apply my own uh, research into singles b uh, maybe you can search uh, my 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 name from google scholar my full name you can find a few publications ah few publication uh, uh, regarding the application of uh, uh, <coughs> electrical sensors in uh, singles b but today the the talk is more on to the basic basic i mean uh, on the fundamental okay fundamental cover which give you uh, maybe a slight idea ah slight idea what is stingless b and what's the potential so uh, uh, let me go uh, so the what what is uh, one of the uh, best thing about uh, stingless bee yeah, that they, they are native native means that they are they have been here since long long time ago but if you uh, look at the honey bee uh, even in malaysia the honey bee that the one that sting uh, the one that you the the culture or farm in the, okay uh, to make uh, honey basically uh, some of them were brought from the europe okay uh, that is the category of apis bee or honey bee we are talking about uh, stingless bee or the local people here call it as kelulut kelulut okay so one of uh, the criteria the uh, which is a very commonly associated with, with them is they don't uh, sting so uh, the, the the defense mechanism has uh, changed they do not uh, they do not uh, okay have uh, venom okay and probably the, the worst thing that could happen if you try to provoke them they will only bite you but the bite is not that uh, you know um, painful unless it bite in a sensitive area lah, like your lips you have to avoid so in malaysia they basically uh, uh, around 35 uh, uh, up to 35 to now have grow grow grew to 45 number of species okay i have been identified in 2014 not all of them are very productive lah productive mean good for uh, honey production or well, you can keep it but maybe for for other purposes lah they do they actually serve their purposes in the nature okay they have the purpose but if if you target to make uh, honey uh, there are only few uh, a few i think around 10 or 10 or, two, or 14 species species that are suitable for uh, farming to make for produce honey okay so the singles bee basically uh, the okay you for can google or check uh, if you want to know in detail uh, but we are not going to discuss that in in okay uh, these are the common singles bee that is uh, uh, kept in the farm okay 
the this the top one is the he, he, heter trigona itama bakri and iro uh, erythrogaster okay but the common most abundant or most people keep is itama okay trigona itama the the short name lah but we use we we refer them to itama here i have uh, mostly itama 90% itama the second one maybe but maybe the 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 uh <coughs> rank is wrong but this is what what i observe lah so thoracica okay the second uh, most popular that is the thoracica it's they, they are called as the uh, gentle giant huh? they are quite big and the size uh, they are around 3 mm to 10 mm and thoracica they are fall under the category of giant giant okay so we will you will see it don't worry terminata also small and the other other uh, in my farm i have itama uh, perhaps maybe bakri because itama and bakri they are quite similar they are like cousins but basically uh, they are very close okay uh, itama and bakri uh, we are also we have one thoracica and also one bigami bigami here we have one bigami uh, uh, bigami is a uh, different species they also commonly kept in farms okay the, okay, the list uh, morphology okay this is important okay the body parts uh, category uh, main uh, uh, <coughs> have three main parts okay first the head okay the head part head the antenna compound eye main okay and uh, and then the thorax okay the thorax uh, you can say the middle okay middle part and the abdom and the back on the abdomen abdomen cover the thorax wing uh, uh, sorry uh, cover the okay uh, like the abdomen at the corbicula and the legs uh, legs is the front part corbicula is like the like you can see as this picture is like a, a modified uh, rare leg that it used to carry uh, pollen or resin okay they look when they are flying it's like their leg is extend uh, like dangling okay suspended or in the air okay so it's like the corbicula and this is how it look when it carrying uh, resin or pollen okay and and uh, most uh, of their body are covered with uh, tiny hairs huh? okay